This video is brought to you by video blocks. Hi everyone. Aaron here for Zolo tech. And I wanted to show you how I edit a video from start to finish. I use final cut pro on a Mac and let's go ahead and open it up here and then I'll make it full screen. And this is what you'll get if you're new to the program. If not, I'll just show you how I edit. Now I normally record my video and audio separately. So we'll go ahead and click this down arrow to import our footage. Now, if you just pop in a memory card or connect a camera, this will normally just pop up, but you can click that down arrow. Now here you'll see, I have Lumix. That's my memory card. And here's my different footage. It just shows up. And in this case, we're going to actually record video of, or do a, a video of the Google pixel buds an unboxing an overlook or overview of it. So we'll highlight all three of these by holding command and then clicking on it. So clicking them individually by holding command, you can highlight more than one clip and just drag here. I don't want this one. So we've got these three clips. We can skim through them, but we've got those three, three clips up here. I'll create a new event and I'll name it Google pixel buds. And then I'll click import. Now you can change all of these different things. We can optimize it and everything else, but right now I just want to have it imported and then click import. Before we move on to the next step, first a word from our sponsor. This video is brought to you by video blocks. Video blocks is a service I've been using for a very long time that allows you to bring in stock footage into your videos. So maybe you need a shot of an iPhone or maybe you need a shot of a city or maybe a new intro. They have all of this stock footage available. Video blocks has one of the fastest growing largest stock video libraries with over 3 million videos, after effects and motion backgrounds. This includes the only contributor marketplace that gives 100% of the commission back to the artists. And all of these clips come with a royalty free agreement. So you can't get hit with copyright claims. We're giving away seven days of video blocks so you can try it out and get access to this massive video library and royalty free license for free. Go to videoblocks.com slash YouTube, or click the link in the description box below to start downloading and get seven days of video blocks for free. So now it's importing and we can adjust our settings here and everything else. But the other thing I need to import is actually my audio files since I record the audio through a separate microphone like I'm doing right now. So here I have piezo. We're just going to import the same footage and then you'll see here. Let me sort it by the time it's imported. Here we have the different pixel buds audio. I'm not sure which one is which, but we'll click import selected. We're going to import them into the exact same thing. It remembers what you were in. So we'll just click import. So here's all our footage. I'm going to change the size of it by shrinking it here so that I can kind of, or shrinking it here rather, so I can see uh, all of the clips individually. So it'll take a moment. There's all the different audio clips and you can see as I skim across here, we could listen and you can see the different time code here. Now, the first thing I need to do is create a new project. I don't normally click this button here, but rather I go to file and then at file, I click new project and I'll name it pixel buds and we'll do an unboxing here. Now we can use custom settings or since I recorded it in the, the, the footage that I want, I think it's 4k 60. I'll click okay. And it will just do it automatically. Now we can use custom settings here. If we want to do that, we can do that, but we'll just use automatic. Now, before I move anything into this down here, I need to use my audio. So we'll click on this. And I have it set up as dual mono. It's a mono microphone. It's a radio microphone. It's a high LPR 40 and it's recording here right now. And I recorded it on the video. Now, if I want to sync it with the video, I know that it's the first one. It puts it in order that it was recorded. So I know this was the first, second, third, and fourth. It was recorded. And these are the clips. So one of these isn't going to match up, but we'll click on this. We'll hit command, click on this. And then you can option click or right click and click synchronize clips. We'll just click. Okay. We can change all of this, but I'll just click. Okay. It makes it easy. And here's our clip. Now it does it automatically. We can see the waveforms if we want by opening it up and yep, they match up. You can see the different matching here of all the different frames. We can, we can match them up, but if you just drag and drop this down here, it will keep the newer audio. Now, one of the things I like to do is make sure my audio is leveled and I like to keep it right in the negative 12 to negative six decibel uh, range right here. And there's a couple things I throw on to do that. So if I 
increase the volume. I can just click here and do that. Or I can go up here and this slider here will do the exact same thing. So I increase that volume. And then over here, we can see uh, we want this one right here. Actually, uh, we can go to our audio down at the bottom and click levels. I always throw on the limiter. This usually keeps it so that it doesn't peak above zero decibels. So it, it keeps the audio nice and uh, within the range it should be. And then I also throw gain on there in case I need to bump it up a little bit. So let's see where we're at. I'll hit play just by hitting the space button to or space bar or pixel two XL. Okay. So you'll see it's a little low here. I want to bump that up. Usually I find that in these parameters here in the inspector, I usually find that if I bump this to four, it's good. Sometimes I need to turn my inputs up on my microphone itself. I just didn't do that for this video. So I need to bump it artificially here. You'll see they all just changed. I'll hit space. Hi everyone. <clears throat> Hi. There we go. And you'll hear I made a mistake and I often do that. So you'll hear that a lot. Now, one of the things I do is zoom a lot using a trackpad and you can pinch to zoom or use your fingers to pinch and zoom. You can also control that in different areas throughout. So if you want to go here, you've got zoom for Z. You can click Z or, or type Z on your keyboard or do it here and then click to zoom in. I find it's easier on a trackpad to pinch and zoom in and out, but either way will work. So let's try this here and we'll hit play. <clears throat> now B is for blade. We're going to make a cut right here. A is for arrow to select. Then I'm going to hit delete and get rid of that clip. And let's see what this sounds like. I'll hit space. Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolo Tech, and this is something I've been waiting for for quite some time actually. This is the Google Pixel Buds. You open it up, it says hi there, kind of something interesting. It says Google Store, I appreciate that. But let's set this aside. So that looks good. We've got the audio set. Now let's make sure the color is set. And I'm not a huge colorist or anything, I just like to make sure it's bright enough. Now you can use the automatic version of doing that by clicking this little button here, click Balance Color. And that might brighten it enough. And a lot of the times that will do the job right there. But if you want to check your levels, you can hit command and seven. And those are the levels right there. Generally skin tones are within 25 to 50. If you keep those in there, it keeps skin tones, the right temperature or, or vibrancy, I guess, or brightness. And I normally leave those things alone. I don't generally change the color coming out of the GH five that I'm using because I like the color. Unless I'm doing something more artsy outside, then maybe I'll use LUTs and you can look up those, they're called lookup tables. You can look up those uh, elsewhere to see more about those. Those are a little bit more advanced if you want to do different color grading. We're not going to get into that because I don't do a whole lot of that. So we'll do command seven. Everything looks okay. It's under a hundred and above zero for the dark. So we'll do command seven and get rid of that again. And then what I'll do is leave this like this and you can get rid of the inspector if you'd like, but I'll just go through and edit. So what I normally do is I hit space. I play the video. If I like it, I make a cut where there's breaks. So you can see these breaks here. There's probably something where I change it or maybe I goofed up and need to start again. So we'll play it and see how it goes so that we can get into the Google Pixel Buds themselves. If you move your finger left to right, you can just scroll through the timeline. So it's really easy. You can do that on the trackpad with two fingers or on a magic mouse or click and drag if you've got a mouse that way. So to save time, I'll speed some of this process up, but I'm about to edit most of this now. So here's where I have a long pause of nothing. So I'm just going to cut right here and then I'll cut over here and then I'll highlight this, hit delete. Let's zoom in a little bit and you'll see this is where that transition is. So let me see if I can see what it looks like and maybe fix that a little bit. And according to the instructions, all you need to do is you close this and make sure Bluetooth is on here. Let's make sure. So if you use the arrow up keys, you can jump back to where the last cut was arrow up arrow down. I don't like to put a whole lot of transitions in here. Let me shorten this up maybe a little bit. You can click and drag. Now, if it's snapping and you don't want it to snap, you can hit N 
and then it will snap or stop snapping, meaning it won't snap to a point. Now it's not snapping to the line. If I hit N, it will snap to that line. And then if you mess up, you can use Command Z and it will jump back. But let's try this now. Do And according to the instructions, all you That's need to okay. do is you close the I'll zoom back out a little bit. Close this and make sure Bluetooth is on here. Let's make sure Bluetooth. Is and see, I'm repeating myself here, so I need to go back and fix some of this. So I need to go back here, hit that little button there, and it lights that up. So, like that, lights that so up. I kind of like this here. I'll cut this whole part out of it. And let's see what it's like now. And according to the instructions, okay, that's a little bit more harsh of a of a jump cut there. Let's see if I can smooth that out a little bit. Up. And according to the so sometimes I'll throw in a little transition. You can throw in a basic transition by holding Command T, and let's shrink that down. That up. And according to the instruction, and according to the instruction. So that'll look better, but it's a really small transition. I like to shrink the size of it. So this is where the video ends for this particular clip. I'll cut right here, get rid of this clip, and I'm going to need the next one. We'll use this clip next. And it's been about 10. So I messed up quite a bit. Now here's a really handy shortcut. I've done a lot of changes to the audio on this one already. If I do Command C to copy, just highlight the clip, copy, go to this clip, and do Command Shift V. Now you can paste attributes. So I can paste the same balance, the same audio attributes. I don't have to do it over again. It just raises everything up to where it was since it was recorded at the same time. So let's find where we need to actually edit here. Some of this doing these videos is experimentation and seeing how it works. So let's see. We'll transition again. We'll cut that part out. I'm not sure. I don't like how long that transition is, so I'll shorten it. I'm not sure. And I kind of want to cut it here, I think. And again, the same commands. I'm not sure. There we go. It took about a good third. So I don't like that either. I'm going to cut this a little bit or slide that back a little bit and do it again. So I'm going to cut part of this out. We'll go here, get rid of this piece. So now it says they're at 12. I'm going to throw in a quick transition and shrink that down to smooth that out a little bit. They're connected. So now it says they're at 12. Okay, then we're going to go here, and I'm going to jump forward a little bit. Again, editing out that part. So now we'll go ahead and hit next. And it says sleep mode and charging. So I'm not sure if I like this transition. Let me check one more time. To me. So now we'll go ahead and hit next. That's fine. And it says sleep mode. And I think everything's good. I'm just going to let this play out and see how it goes. So here's the part where I goofed up a little bit. If you haven't subscribed, so I'm going to make a cut right here. It's below. That's where I want to cut it. And a lot of this just comes with doing it over and over. After you've edited quite a few videos, uh, this becomes pretty second nature of where you speak and how you speak and where you need to make those cuts if you're doing videos of yourself. Hello. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time. So at this point, what I normally do is finish up the video. So let me make this last cut here. We'll shrink this back and you'll see the whole film or the footage is about six minutes. So we'll go back here and what I normally do is I put titles on, I put a, a watermark and then I put an outro here too. So let me bring in another library that I have. So here I've opened another library. I'm going to take my Xbox One X video that I did. I'll go into its project and what I'm going to do since I've already done these outros, I'm just going to copy it and paste it into the other video. And you can go back and forth by using this button after you've opened another project. So if I go back, we'll go back again and turn snapping back on. And 
Command V to paste. Let's zoom in. I need to adjust the music a little bit. So the music should start basically where this is, should start at the end for me. So then we get rid of this and you'll see it, let I'll it play. See you next time. So that's that transition and I've used some plugins to create this. Let's go again, two videos forward to the Xbox One X and go all the way to the beginning. And here is, again, you'll see it's from, it's an M Lowers is the name of the plugin. I just like to throw in my social media here. And this is something I've been waiting for for quite some So that's time. good. And then finally, I like to watermark my footage since that way it lets everybody know it's mine. And if someone tries to take it, they'll know it's mine also. Uh, we'll just drag this to the end. And this is just a simple text with the font that I use down here, right here. We'll drag it to the end. And then I click the whole thing. And when you click the whole thing and click Command-T, it throws a transition on the beginning and the end. So now I've got everything together, uh, everything together and my footage is ready to go. I need to export it. And what I do for that is I go to the top here, go to File, Share, and I use Master File. And the reason I use this is I find I get a better quality and I'll click on it and I'll show you what I mean. Here are just the simple things that says what the name is the creator and the tags, we'll click settings. And here's where I change things. I change things to web hosting, and then I change it to either faster in code or better quality. Since it's compressed again by YouTube, I find that faster in code basically gives me the same result that I'm going to get anyway. So I use faster in code 3840 by 2160 since it was 4K and this is the file size. Now you can compress this and change it. It's also 5994 for frames per second, so 60 frames per second, and that's how I leave things. Now you can do it other ways, but I like to leave a copy of it on my computer and then save that footage. I don't wanna upload it directly to YouTube, that's just my preference. You can do it however you'd like, but this is how I do it. So I'll go ahead and hit next, and this is where I'll save it into my YouTube videos and then hit save and it will start compressing it. It's a really pretty simple process and once you get the hang of it, basically using the space bar, the zoom, B for cutting or B for, for break or blade, and then A. So I use A, B, and then the copy and paste functions in the space bar. I really don't use a whole lot to edit and that's most of my videos. This is a pretty basic edit but hopefully that gives you a good idea of how to actually edit footage within Final Cut Pro, and that's how I edit footage. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time. Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 11.2 Beta 2 has been out for a few days and I thought I'd do a follow-up. Now I've been using it on my iPhone 10, and the public beta brought with it Apple Pay for iMessages. So if you go into iMessage and then you go to Apple Pay, if you have someone you're sending to that has Apple Pay, you'll actually be able to pay through your wallet and then send them some money. So that's been enabled for public beta testers and developers uh, to test that out as well. Now I've been using it on my 8 Plus as well and my 10 and uh, it's been okay. In fact, right before I made this video, it locked up on me. So I went to swipe up, just swipe up like that. It wouldn't respond at all. I had to push the uh, power sleep wake button, turn it back on, unlock it, and now it's unlocked. And it, it's been a little bit buggy here and there. In fact, it's been the most buggy with Apple CarPlay, I think. I was using CarPlay with Pocket Cast. I thought it was that app, but then I was making a phone call and all of a sudden it completely locked up. It froze, I had to unplug it and plug it back in. Then it worked. The call stayed connected, but it completely froze. No audio was there. It completely stopped. So this beta is not without bugs, at least on the iPhone 10. On my iPhone 8, the previous beta was fine. I had no issues. And obviously I'm using this one a little bit more, but as far as battery goes, 
it's okay. I wouldn't say it's phenomenal. I'd say it's just okay right now, but that may be the differences with the iPhone 10 versus the eight plus. I'm not really sure at this point. Uh, it's hard to get a little bit of a reference point since I've been using this less than a full week, but for me, it's been buggy and it locks up from time to time on this beta. It was fine before the beta and now it's just it's weird with its responsiveness. Sometimes it's great, other times it's not. And I find that I have to restart it once in a while. And I don't know if that's the experience everyone else is having, but I'm having that with beta two. Now on the iPhone eight plus, uh, the eight plus, uh, is basically uh, pretty stable and good for the most part. I really haven't had any issues here, but like I said, I've been using this more as my everyday phone. You can see, I don't have a SIM card in this one anymore. So, and this one just feels huge in the hands. This one feels like a tiny phone to me, although the screen is taller. It's a little bit smaller as far as that goes. Now that's pretty much it. I don't have much more to say other than I've had it freezing up. It's not incredibly stable. Battery is okay. It's not great. And let me see what my battery is today. I think my battery has been okay, but it's been plugged in since I charged it. So that's not really a great indicator. When I drive, I plug it in, but you see 26 minutes of usage. So it's not great. And we're at 94% and it wasn't at a hundred. So I really don't have a great reference point right here, but that's pretty much it. As far as that goes, uh, please keep sending these wallpapers along though. They're great. I post them so you can grab them in the description and this one is great. I'll leave the uh, name of the person that actually sent it to me in the description as well. If you want to send it, just follow me on Twitter, send it there or my email. Also, if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.